My dearly beloved in Christ, today we read a story in the gospel about our Lord driving the devil out of a man. And this is only one of a good number of accounts in scripture of our Lord casting out a devil. Also, when our Lord sent his apostles forth to travel around and preach, he, it says, gave them power over the devils. And once again, when he sent out the 72 disciples to go into every place and village that he was about to go, they came back and they said, even the devils were subject to us and that they cast out devils in our Lord's name. So it would seem that at the time of our Lord, it was much more frequent to encounter cases of possession, bodily possession by the demons. And that is certainly not at all that common today, not at least as what we read in Scripture at the time of our Lord. But there is something more terrible than the devil possessing or taking control of a person's body. And that would be the possession of one's soul. And we should never underestimate the devil, never underestimate his hatred of us and his desire for our perdition. Now, when we say the devil, we are including all of the fallen angels because we know that when God created the angels, he gave them a test. He was not going to give them the beatific vision and everlasting happiness without them doing something to earn it. So the angels were given a test. We don't know for certain there is speculation, the nature of that test, but what we do know is that many of them failed. They rebelled against God and they followed an angel who was not only so endowed with gifts from God, but he was even called the light bearer, Lucifer. And he led this rebellion against God, saying those memorable words, I will not serve. And St. Michael and the good angels, who were more numerous, cast out the bad angels who rebelled, and they were cast into hell. In fact, our Lord says in St. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, our Lord is talking about the wicked who are condemned to hell. And he says that they shall be sent into everlasting fire, which was prepared for the devil and his angels. So hell was prepared to punish this rebellion on the part of the wicked spirits. And you might ask yourself, why is it that they hate us so much and that they plot our ruin and they tempt us. And the reason is because we have the opportunity to go to heaven, which they lost. So they envy that opportunity. And in their hatred of God, they direct that hatred towards us, God's creatures, who are called and destined to be with God forever. And again, we should never underestimate the hatred that these evil spirits have for us and their machinations to try and bring us down, to tempt us and bring about our ruin. We say that our enemies or our threefold enemy would be the world, the flesh, and the devil. So we know what we mean by the world. We know what we mean by the flesh, the temptations arising from our fallen human nature. But when we say also the devil, that would include all of the evil spirits who tempt us to sin. And the devil is very cunning. He has thousands of years of experience in tempting men to sin. And ultimately his goal is the destruction, the loss of our immortal soul. So we must fear the devil. We respect him and when I say him, it includes all the evil spirits because they are angels. Fallen angels are bad angels, but nevertheless, demons. And be very much on our guard against their temptations, their wiles, their cunning. There is a story told, I'm sure you've read it because I've read it in many places, that Pope Leo XIII, 
who was Pope in the latter part of the 19th century, one day had a vision. And in this vision, he heard Lucifer talking to our Lord and challenging our Lord and saying, if you give me time, I will destroy your church. And our Lord said, how much time do you need? And he said, a hundred years. And then our Lord said, you have your hundred years. Meaning that he would be given more influence, perhaps, or a greater opportunity to spread error and evil than he previously had. And some mystics will say that Lucifer himself was chained in the dungeons of hell and that the other bad angels tempt us, but that he himself, the prince of the devils, was released at that time. Now, that was in 1884. And when Pope Leo XIII recovered from this frightening vision, he sat down and wrote the prayer to St. Michael that we pray after Mass, along with the three Hail Marys, Hail Holy Queen, etc. And what's interesting is that those prayers after Mass, which are referred to the Leon, as the Leonine prayers after Pope Leo the Thirteenth, those were eliminated in the early 1960s. One of the first things that the modernists did was to get rid of that prayer to St. Michael after Mass. And of course, we know what happened with Vatican II. So the devil is very clever. And again, as I said, he's had all this experience of thousands of years. And so finally, after trying to destroy the church from without, he decided, well, I will try to destroy it from within. And that is what happened, what culminated in Vatican II and the destruction that has occurred since then. The modernism that was spread among the clergy. And one of the interesting things about modernist thinking is that many modernists believe or teach that there is no such thing as a devil. That's a myth. That's like a story that was made up by priests and parents to kind of scare children into being good. It has often been said that the greatest victory of the devil is to get people to believe he isn't real, that he doesn't exist. So we know that there is a devil and there are many devils, and that they seek our destruction. Our Lord himself speaks about in today's gospel that when the devil is driven out of a person, he roams about seeking a place of rest, and finally he goes back to the place where he was driven out. And then he brings seven other evil spirits more wicked than himself. And that is a reminder to us that we never take a rest or a vacation from spiritual pursuits, especially trying to conquer sin. That we may, by the grace of God, win a victory. The devil, in a sense, is driven away. But he will come back, and he will come back again and again, because he will not rest until he sees our destruction. So be very aware of the wickedness of the devils and their desire to bring about our perdition. At Fatima, the children were given a vision on the third apparition, July the 13th of 1917, of the fires of hell. And they said that they saw the demons in the shape of weird and unknown animals that frightened them terribly, and that these demons were were tormenting the damned. Yes, hell is very real, the demons are very real, And the importance of saving our soul is something that must never be underestimated. We are in a battle every day. As St. Paul says, it's not a battle of flesh and blood, but it's a battle of the spirits of wickedness in the high places. It's a battle between good and evil, the good angels and the bad angels, and human beings striving for good and being tempted to evil. So these are things that come to mind as we reflect upon today's gospel. Our Lord refuted the utter illogic of the argument of his enemies, and they said, well, he's driving devils out by the power of the devil. And as our Lord said, that doesn't even make sense, because if the devil were fighting against himself, how would his kingdom stand? 
No, the devils hate one another, but they work together to bring about our ruin. And they desire to ruin as many souls as possible. So let us be aware, aware of their influence, on our guard against it. And also, never forget that you have a good angel, that God in his goodness has given you a guardian angel who constantly puts good thoughts in your mind, inspires you, prays for you, is concerned for you, and has this this wonderful solicitude for our welfare and our salvation. Let us remember our guardian angel, pray to him to help us to conquer temptation, to conquer the devil, because by the grace of God, every temptation of the devil can be conquered and resisted. Let us make certain we do so, aware of his evil and his cunning, but also aware of the power of our Blessed Mother, of Almighty God himself, of course, of the good angels, and that we can overcome temptation by cooperating with God's grace and resisting evil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.